So hello everyone, um, my name is Gabriela, Gabriela Civica, I'm the director at the Centre for European Volunteering. Uh, we're a European network based in Brussels. Um, our network consists mainly of national and regional volunteer centres, volunteer platforms. Uh, we have members in most of the countries of, of the European Union and beyond uh, within the Council of Europe countries. Uh, if you're curious afterwards, if in your country we have a member, you can, you can let me know or you can check on the website uh, and see how you can connect also with these national, what we call volunteering infrastructure uh, organisations across Europe. And our members are mainly focused not really on volunteering directly, but they are focused on supporting those organisations that do engage volunteers directly. So they help them with understanding legal frameworks, they help them with quality volunteering issues, uh, volunteer management training, uh, training of mentors, so all of these infrastructure issues which can help volunteers be of a higher quality uh, and therefore have a higher impact. So I'm very privileged to be able to work on volunteering, solidarity issues every day. I do take some days off, but not, but not many, but really all the time I have the great privilege of, of thinking about volunteering, about solidarity and supporting those of you that are volunteering and putting solidarity into, into action uh, every day. I'm from the UK originally, so you don't need to congratulate me on my English or anything like this. Um, uh, I'm okay. And if I just start to speak too fast, you can start to wait. Uh, I will slow down. Um, as you probably realise, I, I wasn't here yesterday. Yesterday in, in Brussels we had a quite a, an important meeting for this time of year and for this moment in the political cycle. Uh, hopefully some of you, most of you hopefully, probably uh, voted in the European Parliament elections that we had recently. Uh, the members of the European Parliament are just starting their work uh, now, uh, after being elected, taking some summer holidays, and now they are starting to formulate the committee, start their work in the Parliament. Uh, and we had a meeting with some of those MEPs who are ready and waiting to support solidarity, to support volunteering in Europe. So that's why I could only join you and later on during the event. But I've had a very enjoyable and interesting day today listening to your conversations, to your discussions, to your dilemmas, to the solutions that you're able to, to focus on and come up with. And one of the things that I, I heard, I think one of the first things, was about this connection between participation and power. Uh, and how participating can, can give power and can lead to power and is of course a feeling of empowerment. And I think what we do in, in our network is we try to empower organisations, to empower volunteers, to empower their communities. And I think this, this um, uh, idea of empowerment is, is very much at the centre of, of what we do. And we expect to, to see and help people to be active citizens in the local communities, in the wider community, uh, nationally, across the EU, globally, uh, rather than passive consumers. We, we are hoping that people will not just passively go through life by uh, taking what they can as they go, but actually they will be actively engaged uh, in the world around them, in the community around them. Addressing the needs, addressing the lack of inclusion, lack of equality, lack of understanding, lack of togetherness, trying to improve the respect for human rights that we see so increasingly, unfortunately, decreasing across Europe and having really a, a shared purpose with everyone. You can see here the, the image of the volunteering ecosystem that we made a few, a few years ago. Uh, as a European network, we have two roles. One is to enable the networking and the exchange and the learning between our member organisations and other stakeholders. And by the way, you're very welcome to attend any of our events, there are no fees, they are open to everyone, so uh, while we have a network, it's also a very open a community of stakeholders for volunteering. But one of the other things we do, importantly, is advocacy with the European institutions, with the European policymakers around volunteering, around solidarity issues. Uh, and what we understood very quickly is that when we talk to policymakers about volunteering, about solidarity, they have one idea in mind immediately. Or in some cases they have no ideas, but that's rare. Very often they have one idea because of one experience of volunteering they had, or one volunteer they met, or one uh, item about volunteering they saw on the media, maybe supporting refugees or in the COVID crisis. Or, but, but then everything you talk to them about policy uh, is just in the prism of that one kind of volunteer that they have in mind. 
So at some point, we thought it was really essential and important to show the policymakers what the whole volunteering ecosystem looks like. So this is what we did a few years ago. We're actually in the process of updating it. Um, so if any of you have wonderful ideas about what we are missing from this ecosystem, I'll be very happy to, to hear from you. Sure. Um, sure. But basically, just to explain where we see volunteering and solidarity in the, in the society, we see two kinds of volunteering. One is the continuous volunteering, which is this bottom part, where people are volunteering in a rather continuous, regular way, weekly, monthly, annually, whatever fits for them. And then we also have what we're calling sporadic volunteering. So people who will volunteer just from time to time in a sporadic ad hoc moment. So that could be in a, in a planned moment. Uh, and this is typically around events. So we just had the Olympics in Paris. Probably you saw that there are volunteers there. Maybe you had some local community festivals over the summer. Probably they were supported by volunteers. So these volunteers acting in, a, in an ad hoc way, in a sporadic way, but in a really planned uh, moment that they are really saying, yes, I will sign up and I will volunteer in that moment. The unplanned, which is not so unplanned because they are trained people, they are prepared people, but they are volunteering when we have disasters or when we have crisis. For example, uh, lots of refugees arriving at one place at one time or floods or fires or earthquakes. Um, these kind of moments where we need trained volunteers to be available at that moment to help with um, recovery um, and uh, rebuilding uh, after disasters as well. So this is the, the sporadic side. Uh, also in the events, we distinguish between big events that will happen anyway, even without the volunteers. So the volunteers in, in many occasions, sadly, are there really as a cost-cutting measure. They are there as a cost-saving measure because the event would happen and could happen without the volunteers but then also small events uh, that wouldn't happen at all without volunteers. Small local uh, sports competitions or small local festivals that really need the volunteers to, to be there. Then on the continuous side, we distinguish between volunteers who are directly helping people. So whether in education and learning, social services and health, sports, art and culture, and then those volunteers that are not directly engaging with people. So they might be looking after ecology or animals. They might be doing conservation and restoration of historical buildings, um, technological improvements, designing websites, um, preparing newsletters, creating new apps for people with disabilities to help them be more independent. So this kind of, of volunteering that's not directly with people. So this is our, our ecosystem, and then of course we have mentors, we have the advocacy around volunteering, we have European Solidarity Corps, uh, and we have the support organizations up there. So this is the, the ecosystem that we, that we have. What we don't have in this ecosystem, and that's what we want to um, emphasize in the new version, is how we can describe and depict and explain that yes, all these volunteers are, are delivering services, they are delivering things, they are doing things. And that's very important for quality volunteering. It's very important to have good impact and to have a real needs-based uh, volunteering that we're not inventing things that actually don't need help, that we're really going on a needs-based approach. But we also have to go beyond this idea of, of service delivery. Volunteering has a much deeper meaning around human connectedness, around coming together, around solidarity. Um, which is beyond this um, kind of practical aspects of what volunteers do. So this is one of the things that we are working with some great artists who are going to try to put these ideas also into the, um, into the picture. What we also miss here, and one of the trends that we, that we see, and I think this is a huge um, challenge for the European Solidarity Corps, is we see that people are moving away from what we call role-based volunteering. So we see that people are less inclined to volunteer to be the bookkeeper for the sports association. But they will do the accounting for the sports association on Sunday. So it's a difference between taking on the role of the bookkeeper of the sports association and agreeing to do the task of doing the books on a specific day at a specific time. Then when they do it on Sunday, maybe they go back the next Sunday and the next Sunday and before they know it, they are the bookkeeper of the sports association. But in the beginning, they are not ready to put their hand up to say, I will take on that role. 
So this is really a shifting uh, pattern and a shifting idea. And within the Solidarity Corps, where so much of the resources and the attention is put on the individual volunteering part of the Solidarity Corps, which is really based on roles, on taking a role for six months, one year, uh, and that this is not really the direction of travel for volunteering generally. If we're looking into the future, we need to see how this rather more task-based volunteering, which is maybe around the solidarity projects, maybe around the volunteering teams, uh, how this difference between task-based and role-based um, can be reflected in, in what we are doing uh, in volunteering in general, and especially in the solidarity core. We all know more technology. I think everybody here has probably mobile phone, computer, and essentially that should mean, or at least we feel we have the sense that that makes us more, more connected. We are always connected with other people. But paradoxically, uh, what's actually happening is that our spheres of, of movement, our ability to connect with people that are not a reflection of ourselves is actually reducing. We are more and more um, becoming into this small echo chamber, smaller and smaller, of people who think like us, maybe look like us, are like us. Volunteering is one of those spaces where you can break out of that, and I think some of the speakers already mentioned that as well today. So how can we uh, make sure that more and more people, more and more young people in the context of this, this conference have, have access to these kind of opportunities? Increasingly lately, I've heard on a few occasions, particularly young people, when encountering a problem, a practical problem, could be anything, the bus is late or the train is cancelled or whatever it is, um, just to shrug, shrug and to say, it is what it is, and not really care or feel that they can have any influence to, to change the situation. And I think this is a very, at least for me, a dangerous trend to hear young people just to shrug and say, it is what it is. It's not what I've experienced during my life. Um, it's not what I see in most young people around. So I think this is a trend that we have to be very careful of, that we're not just feeling so disempowered, that we're just saying it is what it is and not actually trying to, to change anything. The converse of it is what it is could be, well, just do it. You see a problem, let's get it sorted, let's just do it. The problem with that is, and I think it's also something that's being uh, mentioned, is that it's, it's just not possible in many cases. We're not empowered enough to just do it, to just address the problems that we see. We need a structure, we need a framework, we need finance, we need resources. And this is what we need from our policymakers, but it's also what we need from each other. How can we identify the common challenges that we have? How can we best face and address those common challenges together? And without the framework that we need, without the policy framework, without the strategic framework, without the forward thinking, how are we going to empower people now and in the future? Then we are just leaving solidarity, volunteering, civic engagement, we're just leaving it to chance. We're just leaving it to, let's hope that in that moment, in that occasion, that need will be met by some people who happen to be there. We need to have a more, a more structured approach. And I don't know, because it's a bit opaque how it happened, but I think this is part of the reason why the United Nations has declared 2026 as the International Year of Volunteers for Sustainable Development. Um, there are no concrete plans for it yet, and I think that's in a way also interesting, exciting, it leaves uh, a lot of scope, because I think what's been realized that the SDGs are not going to happen just by chance, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, the governments have to have a plan for that, civil society has to have a plan for that, and we need to work together, civil society, governments, business, everyone, uh, to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. And particularly in 2026, we'll be looking at the framework for how um, volunteers and people showing solidarity and people uh, acting, engaging in their communities can do just that little bit more to try to meet the Sustainable Development Goals um, before 2030. Complex problems generally don't have simple solutions, but those solutions that will be found will be found by people coming together people from different sectors, people from different fields, people with different expertise, uh, and we need the framework for that. Looking to the future, for sure we need new and updated 
legal frameworks for volunteering. The legal frameworks that we have now in most cases don't take into account the online volunteering. They rarely take into account uh, GDPR issues and, and protection issues uh, connected online, but also um, with, uh, with people. It's, it's still quite shocking to me and, and quite frightening that even within the European Solidarity Corps, where we have lots of checks and balances, but, but more broadly, in most countries, volunteering with vulnerable people, elderly children, people with certain disabilities who can be considered vulnerable, there are no checks. There are no background checks. There are no character references. Um, you know, these kind of legal frameworks still need, still need attention. We still need to update attitudes around volunteering. I still heard among some of you today how even parents, society, people around you think volunteering is a bit stupid. Why would you do something for free? Um, you know, why, why are you doing something that the government should do? And so we still need to work on attitudes that volunteering is not just this doing things for society, but actually it's something much, much stronger. Uh, it's about human connections and it has a meaning which builds into the very fabric of our society and certainly the society that we want to have in Europe that is based on, on diversity, on tolerance, on understanding and an, an expression of the EU values, of course, around democracy. And when volunteers choose to volunteer, we heard also about that today, about the free will nature of volunteering. And at CVU, we are very conscious that we want to defend the free will nature of volunteering. That when volunteers choose to volunteer, that they are choosing change. And not only are they choosing change, but they're choosing to have a role in that change and in the change that they want to see. And we, we do need the legal frameworks, the funding, the resources, uh, the models of volunteering that volunteer organizations are offering to be updated to meet current lifestyles, current trends, current attitudes uh, around volunteering. Sometimes when people think of Europe, they're really only thinking of, of um, a common market, uh, trade, exchange, the economy, uh, Schengen, the euro, and some time ago some senior politicians referred to the euro as the beating heart of Europe, that the euro is really where everything else European uh, radiates from this beating heart that is the, the euro, the money uh, of, volunteer, of, uh, of Europe. And we wanted to, to counteract that at the time, that, that Europe should not just be an economic uh, idea, that Europe needs to be more of a societal idea, more of a shared ambition, a shared experience. Uh, we often talk about the European project. And then we started to talk about if the euro is the heart of Europe, then the volunteers are the lungs of Europe. Volunteers are the ones breathing life into Europe, breathing life into a society that we really want to, to live in, making that lifestyle choice to be engaged, to be active, to be aware of the needs around us, to be aware of what our role in addressing those needs uh, can be. I count myself very, very lucky that I came from a, a family and a schooling situation and a non-formal education situation where, where volunteering and where looking after others and being uh, forgiving and tolerant of others was, was just part of the, of the way of life. Um, so it wasn't very hard for me to be a volunteer to, to get involved in these things. But again, something you, many of you have mentioned today, that that's not for everyone. And we are very aware that not everyone has that immediate chance to understand what is solidarity, to understand uh, doing things for others. People are just you know, fighting for survival, looking for themselves. Um, so we need help. We need to help young people understand what is volunteering, what is civil society, what is civic engagement. And also at CV, we are working a lot on introducing service learning that involves volunteering in schools, civic education that involves volunteering in schools, and a civic education that involves volunteering and also critical thinking. We're seeing a huge decline in the ability of, of young people and new generations being able to think critically about messages they see, information they receive, ideas they hear about, uh, critically think about different ways to solve problems. Um, and this is something that we try to address through, through changes in formal education, but we also need to try to address in changes in non-formal education and particularly in, in volunteering. 
making sure that volunteering is based on free will, but making sure that every person in Europe can have the opportunity to feel the energy, feel the spirit, feel the motivation uh, of volunteers and understand that there is more to, to life, there is more to quality of life than just addressing your own personal, physical needs, that we also need this um, framework of society around us. The priorities of the new European Commission, I don't know who, who knows them, the priorities of the new European Commission, three words, three words, three priorities. <laughs> you know, I hope you know. Anyone else? No, okay, I'll tell you. Democracy, security, and competitiveness. Maybe not words that you immediately think are connected with what we're talking about today, solidarity and, and volunteering. To me, yes, it, it's quite obvious. Um, and I think if we want a future where volunteering and solidarity is properly taken into account in our political strategies, political futures, political ideas, um, the way that our policymakers think about supporting volunteers and volunteering, we also need to fit that narrative. We need to make volunteering and solidarity fit the narrative of um, democracy, security, and competitiveness. Democracy, I suppose, is maybe the, the clearest one in that we need to, to show that volunteering is a way of active citizenship, it's a way of active participation. Um, democracy is, is not just about voting. I think we're all in, in agreement on that. Voting in, in elections is an important part of democracy, but I think it was also reflected today. There are many countries that have elections, but they are not democracies. So we can't just focus on elections and voting as, as a core or the core principle of, of democracy. Democracy has to be deeper than that. It has to be about engagement, respect for others, inclusion of others, involvement of others. So volunteering and solidarity clearly have a role there. Security, our European policymakers are, I think, unfortunately, mainly thinking about external border security, about military security. Uh, but of course, you see here on the, on the ecosystem, we have a climate crisis, we have increasing um, environmental crisis, we have different kinds of, of situations in our daily lives where volunteers are needed to create resilience against these kinds of crises in the first place, and then to respond to recovery after certain crises, after certain disasters, uh, and then to respond to the, to the rebuilding after these crises and disasters. And all of these things make our communities and our societies more secure against threats which, which are already there in our midst. Threats of also of polarization, of extremism, of hate speech. All of these things affect our security as people, as individuals. And volunteers have a huge part to play in combating these things and making us more secure. So we really have a role there in the future to change this, this narrative. Competitiveness is, is the final one, and again there, I think it's a, maybe a, a complicated word, it, it's about economics, it's about jobs, it's about trade, but when we um, volunteer, we learn. I think everybody here probably knows that very well, and of course when we learn, it means we have increased skills, we have increased competencies to contribute even more to society, even beyond uh, the volunteering in the world of work, etc. So, of course, competitiveness is also improved by, by volunteering. And I think for the future of volunteering, for the future of solidarity to be really embedded in our European strategies and our European policies, we, we need to also start to think and communicate very well about how volunteering and solidarity, in all its complexity and in all its uh, variance and all its ideas, uh, fit into that, into that narrative. I think my time is almost almost up. Um, maybe just to finish on, on one um, point about volunteering. Um, often when I, 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 especially when you arrive late to a conference, and I really, I know some of you, I figured out who some of you are, but sometimes I say, okay, who's a volunteer, who's a staff member? I didn't do it this time, because you all know each other, and I think it's maybe not so interesting for you. But I also think what is interesting, looking out to all of you, Looking at you, I cannot tell 
who is the volunteer, who is the employee, who is whatever. And I think this is what is essential about the nature of volunteering globally, the nature of volunteering in Europe, that volunteering can be for everyone. There is no model, there is no style, there is no person who is a volunteer, who looks like a volunteer. Everyone can be a volunteer. And if we think about future perspectives and future strategies, that's one of the essences of volunteering that we need to protect and we need to expand even further, that the diversity that we gather in volunteering remains strong and remains as broad as possible and that we all play our part in making sure that that uh, continues in that way as well. So thank you for listening. I don't know if there's time for if people have questions, comments, but also informally and still here for another couple of hours, I think so. I'm just looking around if there is an urgent question. <laughs> One. And then we will round up. You're always rushing my question, by the way. <laughs> Not me. Make me keep up. Um, I just have one question. It's regarding the last point that you mentioned about competitiveness. Um, do you mean that volunteering makes um, a country or a market more competitive, or do you mean about this profile of the volunteer um, itself? So, what do you mean by by competitiveness in that context? I think it's everything, but I was referring really to, to member states, to the European Union, to society in general. Uh, why do we want to be more competitive, to, to be more prosperous? Uh, but that prosperity, of course, has to, be, has to be shared. So if people have more and better skills, more and better competencies, a better understanding of other people, a better sense of, of what society is and who is in society, then that, that power of information, that power of knowledge about the others, uh, makes us more competitive as a, as a union, as a whole. I didn't want to rush. <laughs> I will just mention one thing that I forgot. In a few moments or at some point, uh, you will hear a song called Volunteering We Grow, which I'm not going to sing, but it was... <laughs> It was co-written by uh, one of our team members at CV and somebody who some of you may know as Madeleine Kay or some of you might have seen her around as Europe Girl back in the, back in the day. Uh, they wrote the song, they recorded the song, the song is there, it's called Volunteering We Grow. We hope you like it as an anthem. But just to say that there is a competition for a, um, like a playback version of, karaoke version of the song. So, if you need something to entertain yourselves, I heard it's going to rain and it's going to be a storm or something. So, if you really want to enter the competition, you'll be very, very welcome. The uh, karaoke version is available online and we look forward to seeing your, uh, your inspired um, singing and dance moves if you, if you feel so inclined. Thanks for the offer. Yeah, it's raining. We have time. Let's see. Let's see here who is up for a okay. Um, yeah, many offers to come for the rest of this conference. Fantastic. Um, well, thanks, Gabriela. Very thank you.